I think you can say that the I can buildings are integral. So because it's going to be hacked over very these are classes like the like we share on this we we don't on that but yeah I, I mean that's that sounds possible let's run back I don't know about yeah I don't know about the other stuff we didn't think that no this the run is like running back no no oh, you can you can run from race please. No, no, that I come there so you know. So. Wait a little bit. Somebody was the last person leaving the room. I think I was out, but Yang is still like. Were you left or nobody's there? I think Yang was still there. I don't see her. Here, sorry to record you. I'm just wondering if everybody's here. No, oh, yeah. Okay. And are they uh, recording the field? Okay. Um. okay, so um, let me uh, take five minutes to put them on board the tier and we we're going to discuss. This somebody is slowly coming next to a So, so the, 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 the tier and uh, I'll try to explain the proof today. Is so you take this phi, which is a regular algebraic. Um, so this S, which uh, <clears throat> goes for uh, either symplectic uh, in the or more concretely, I will see uh, what means shalika cuspid uh, automorphic representation. Uh, because of the symplectic thing, sh it should be like GIL 2 and away. I don't so. It's not on the key. I don't know. Like, there is light. I think the battery is. Oh, lucky me. I will be recorded. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's my lucky day. Um, Oh, don't worry. I mean, oh. I think it died during my talk. My, my voice is killing me. Okay, I, 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 okay I'll, I'll try to speak louder, at least for you guys, and for the recording. Um, um, so, um, so I, I, I assume that it is everywhere unramified. It's like level one. So you can think, for example, uh, uh, you can think, for example, uh, um, there, there, we, we saw in Raghuram's opening lecture the Ramanujan delta function. So that's a cus form uh, on GIL2. And if you take uh, all the uh, all symmetric powers of delta. So it's it's a theorem. Uh, uh, in recently, there's a paper of Jack Tor, where uh, this thing is uh, um, this guy uh, on GL uh, 2R. Okay, I can keep the N, I guess. This is pi on GL 2N, satisfying the assumption so far. 
It's a very cool example, like a symmetric cube of a revolution delta. If you want. And then, uh, uh, well, you're more and more used this week in order to do periodic things. Uh, there was this f alpha versus f beta uh, story. So you're more and more used to, to the necessity to refine. Uh, so we can see phi tilde is phi together with alpha p, and alpha p is a simple uh, up eigenvalue. I mean, John didn't insist, but in order for this argument to work, alpha needed to be different from beta, and I'm doing something <laughs> similar here. So I'm taking a simple up eigenvalue on uh, phi p invariant by uh, JP, and JP is my kind of generalized Kiva Hori, which I, uh, so JP are n by n matrices, which are um, uh, integral here, GLN of CP, and MN of PCP, and MN of CP, and GLN of CP. Here. And there was this assumption, which I will explain today while explaining the proof. So assume that uh, pi tilde is uh, non uh, Q critical, uh, where Q, Q is the, the NN parabolic. So everything is by block. This is the NN parabolic. In a GL2 and a QB. Uh, GL2. Yeah. Uh, so that's a global assumption. Okay? So it's not it's pure NP. Then the conclusion is that there exists um, a periodical function, LP of phi tilde, uh, which is a distribution on, on CP cross. Uh, of growth uh, HP. So HP was the periodic, oh, yeah, I didn't say here. Uh, so the, the, the regular algebraic means that it has weight, uh, it has weight uh, lambda, which is lambda one, bigger or equal to lambda two n. Sorry, it goes on here, but it's same as last time. Use the system excuse. Uh, so, so growth HP, which is the periodic valuation of um, alpha P modified a little bit. So, modified by this uh, uh, co character. Okay, maybe I can just see what it is. Uh, sorry, so I just compute it for you this time. So, this is just uh, P to the power. Um, Minus uh, 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 <coughs> lambda one plus lambda two. Lambda. Okay. Um, <coughs> uh, such that. Uh, and I, I, will, I won't rewrite the whole formula this time. So when you take this and when you evaluate it with the finite order character times the cyclotomic character to power M. So this, there is some explicit number, which I will not recall, times the L function of pi tensor chi at M plus one half over this period, uh, where chi is a uh, Dirichlet character of conductor beta, and and M was uh, critical. So in this case, M in absolute value should be less than uh, lambda. N. So so what I assumed here is that uh, I assumed that um, the lambda i is uh, plus the lambda two n plus one minus i is zero. So I centered the weight at, at, at zero. So, so because, because you have this twisting procedure in the automorphic, so, so the, 
one of the difference between the modular forms and the automorphic forms is this blue line from the previous talk. You can always twist things. And, um, and it's important for GLN not to get rid of this direction because they're end weights and it creates some kind of asymmetry. And the price to pay is that uh, because you have this liberty to to move to, to, to twist everything by the uh, norm character because the norm of p is p to the minus one kind of introduce powers of p artificially so all the time things has to be normalized uh, in a certain way so so just one has to be careful about these things it's not a big deal I'm just saying if you have a statement for pi you have a statement for pi tensor the absolute value but like a shifted statement okay okay so um um so i, I want to uh okay, maybe make a remark um which i think i made before last time before i had to get through uh so so i want to make a remark is that if uh this uh, hp so if the growth of your distribution is less than the, the length of the critical range, so less than, um, I guess, uh, uh, so two times uh, lambda n. So, so if you have this thing, uh, then, um, by a limited value, so so first, then uh, automatically, uh, then uh, uh, by tilde is non Q critical, so means the theorem applies, still haven't defined what's this, and moreover, this L uh, P uh, uh, by tilde is unique uh, by. What we saw on Monday by Amis Velu and Vishik. Remember, uh, we said on Monday that if you have a distribution of a certain growth, it's uniquely determined by the values of finite order characters times uh, powers of the of the of the cyclotomic character in, in a certain range. Okay, the theorem was the range was from zero to the growth. But you can also go from min minus one half, it can be shifted. That, that's not a big deal. So, so uh, as long as you have the correct number of uh, values, it, it's, it's equivalent. Okay. But um, 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 so, so that, that's all very good. And, and let me give you an example of what this means, like for n equals uh, one. So, n equals one means GL2. So, if you take F. To be a primitive uh, cusp form, uh, so a primitive uh, modular form, so primitive eigenform for um, uh, for this, and let's say uh, maybe k is even just to stick so the way Ragnar did things. Then um, the critical values are f. Uh, the critical range is s plus k over two. So, so the, the the in the automorphic language. The pi attached to f, the L function at s plus one half, which is like the n plus one half here, corresponds. There is a shift, and the critical values here are the integers like one, two, until k minus one. So uh, there are two problems. So first of all, for example, even if k is cohomological, so like if k is two, but uh, if the HP is, is positive, so this can happen. The HP not being zero, zero is uh, like alpha or beta chaotic units. The roots of the Hecke polynomial, they don't need to be chaotic units. I mean, at least one of the two is never a chaotic unit anyway. Right? So, so this, in this case, this HP is just the BP of alpha. So there is no shift or anything. It's really that. Uh, then, uh, I mean, the remark doesn't apply. So you might to have to start to have existential questions whether like a periodical function is even well-defined notion because 
you have um, you know like a distribution which is supposed to supposedly growth but you're allowed to only m has to be zero so you're allowed only to find it all the characters and uh, also there is this example in chaotic analysis that the log map for example the log map that that that's um uh, as an analytic function if you think it as a distribution it's a distribution of growth one which vanishes on all finite order characters so i mean uh, basically, if you modify your periodic health function by a log factor, I mean the equivalent of a log factor, uh, it won't see any change in the interpolation, but it won't be the same function anymore, right? And actually, that's where luckily the eigenvarieties uh, come in, because uh, if you think about John's picture, actually, you shouldn't have erased that board. <laughs> It would have been helpful for me, but anyway. So, 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 so what's happening is that, uh, okay, we have this initial weight lambda, or okay, k here, and we have this modular form f, which seems to lack club critical points, because let's say maybe weight two, and it has only one critical point, and that's not enough to 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 determine to uniquely determine this distribution. Uh, but if you consider this family, so so you take some other case which are periodically close to at k. Well, what's happening is that well, k obviously is getting to this one or two millions, but the h is always the same because the the periodic variation uh, of a continuous function, well, it, it, it's uh, it's taking discrete values. So if it has to stay continuous, it has to be constant. So so the so, so the the the, the, the periodic valuation of FK of sorry of AP of FK, which is the UP eigenvalue of FK, so this is like locally constant. And this means that all the neighbors have like zillions of critical points to uniquely determine their periodic health function. So if you, if, so there is still, if, if you can define like a limit process, the, the, the periodic health function of F will not be determined by the special L values of F, but it will be determined by the special L values of the, its neighbors. So at the end of the day, these periodic constructions still can be called periodic health functions because to call something in my mind, a periodic L function, it has to be uniquely determined by special values of classical L functions. If, if there is no this relation to classical L functions, one should call them just distributions or something which you are sure put like L function in the name. Okay. So well, so 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 in a way, I hope that this board kind of motivates why I will try not to prove just this theorem, but prove it somehow in a family. And actually, it's not more difficult in a way. As in John's talk, instead of writing lambdas, I have to write u's, and things will just formally it will be the same thing we write. Okay, but I'm just explaining why um, I don't want to stick like to one point. Uh, okay, so um, okay, so let's move to the like construction. Oh. <clears throat> okay. Um, so the first thing is that because pi is a, a regular algebraic, and for now we, we, we skip the symplectic thing. So because it's a, a regular algebraic cuspid automorphic representation, this means cohomological so it contributes and when I say it contributes I mean the the set of its Heike eigenvalues or the way Ragnarov explained um, the the relative Lee cohomology of this pi will, will sit in some uh, petty cohomology so contributes to um, H um, so the the the, the cohomology uh, S. So S, I will decorate it just once, and then I'll stop decorating it. So 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 this is like GL uh, GL and GL two n here. And because I took pi to be uh, level one, 
um, I can put here, um, um, well, I can put here like GL2N of Z hat, like a maximal compact subgroup, but actually it's, uh, <clears throat> because of, of okay, so that, that's correct so far. But but um, but actually later uh, I will put something smaller here. I'll put uh, so 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 uh, like later means like from now on. Uh, replace uh, shrink shrink gl two n of cp to uh, jp. That's because I want the UP operator in this is the, the gamma zero NP in in in, in John Stoll. He really wanted this, even if the form has level prime to P, he wanted to, to put it in, in level gamma zero P. Okay. Uh, and and here uh, we have this V lambda dual C. So this is in Ragorab's oh, lecture, it was like some M. I prefer B. But it's basically the C, the C K minus two, if you want, uh, with this algebraic representation. Okay. And what's important is that okay, first because it's cuspidal, I can put a cuspidal or compact support. I can decorate here a little bit the way I want because it's zero at infinity. So okay. Uh, and it contributes. So one of the challenges in this uh, topic is that uh, contributes to a whole range of degrees. Uh, a cuspid automorphic representation doesn't occur just in one degree, it occurs in several degrees. Uh, so, so this range for n equals one, this range is just one, but this range is uh, consists of two numbers, which is four and five for uh, n equals two, so for G of four. Uh, so it was mentioned, uh, that there are already some constructions of eigenvarieties, and there is this very general and beautiful paper of Eric Urban. But what I want to explain here is that we are not purely interested in, in, in periodically interpolating these spaces to construct an eigenvariety, which actually uh, John stated, it's a theorem of David Hansen. We are interested in two Poincare duality. So we're interested in numbers, okay? We are number theorists. So to get a number, it's not enough to have a cohomology class. You have to pair it with something else, like a cohomology class in a complementary degree or a homology class, and to obtain a number. And to do this, to, to make this numerology work, you better fix a degree because I, I won't do like a Poincare duality with a dot here. I have to decide between what I prefer four or five. I mean, I cannot integrate a class which I don't know if it's like a three, a four or five differential form. I mean, if I want to integrate on a on a four-dimensional real manifold, it better be a four-form. If I want to integrate on a five-dimensional manifold, it better be a five-form, okay? So we have to, to choose this. So uh, the choice we, we choose is this one. I'll try to explain one. So this is T like top, okay? So Raghuram um, uh, convinced me of this notation to use uh, T for the top degree. So it contributes there, okay? And so, because we, we, um, we're interested in periodic, um, uh, okay, so, so, so for, let me just write here uh, for, for, for n equals one uh, example. So for n equals one, I'm mentioning mainly this because we spent some time in the exercise session. So I hope this uh, was useful. So for, N equals one, I mean, one plus one minus one is one, so that's good. So we are in H1, compactly supported, uh, this modular curve, so S GL2, uh, some gamma K0 NP, K0 P4. And uh, we have this uh, coefficients, which I'll write very concretely here as the polynomials of degree at most K minus two. You can do homogeneous polynomials in two variables or just polynomials in one variable. It will be the same. Okay. And how in this case we, 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 we obtain numbers. So I explain how we obtain numbers here to motivate like what's coming after. So the way we obtain numbers here 
is you this is so, so this is a Riemann surface right so what you can do is when you take like a uh, a one form uh, you can definitely um, integrate it from one to infinity and you can think of this as a pullback uh, so you can consider a map to H1C of R plus star. Um, and what's important is because this thing is uh, simply connected. So, 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 so on the Riemann surface, uh, which is, uh, you know, this Riemann surface with, which has some genus and also there are like some cusps missing. I mean, this part from, uh, Sorry, I can use more colors. Uh, this path from uh, zero to infinity is, has some, it's completely kind of non trivial. I mean, the integral can be some number. But when you pull back to something uh, uh, simply connected, uh, well, everything is trivialized. So, so, so you can put your coefficients outside. So, what I just explained here, and this thing I, we explained last time that this is just Z. Um, are oriented simply connected manifold. The top degree cohomology is just Z canonically. So this integration, which is the mating transform, right? Just explains. I mean, this mimics the mean, the mating transform if you take the class attached to a modular form. But what's important here is it's a really linear linear form on the whole space. So so that's something uh, I'll, I'll, I'll see once more maybe in a minute. Uh, and this is kind of isomorphic to, to C to the K minus one. And so, so you, you constructed for, for N equals one, this, this linear map from your cohomology to, to K minus one um, dimensional vector space. And, and what's important is that when, if you here, if you take your, your representative, like the differential form attached to your cusp form and you divide by periods, I mean, okay. That there are some things to make this precise, but basically this map gives you the bunch of, I mean, gives you the, the set of, okay, divided by this period, it, it, it gives you the, the, the set of, um, of values of, of the L function of, uh, of uh, M or M between one and K minus one. Right. Okay, so, um, by mimicking this, this, this line, what we want to do? We want to do something analogous and somehow the, 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 this first step to integrate over something. Uh, so so, so the, the, the analogous construction um, well, goes back to uh, Friedberg and Jacquet. So Friedberg and Jacquet, they generalized the main transform for our forms and uh, was uh, rationally presented. Um, in a paper uh, by uh, Robner and Ragura. So, uh, so whatever, um, Whatever Manning and Shimura uh, did using the Manning transform, um, you can look at this paper of Grover and Raghuram. It's very well explained how uh, what's the equivalent procedure. But we are a little bit more uh, uh, ambitious here, uh, and that that's that's because of the idea of Glenn Stevens. So. Uh, <laughs> So, so you see here the idea is you, you, you have some complicated manifold and you have some sheath and you pull back to a real submanifold which is simply connected or at least close to this. Uh, you pull back to something where you can trivialize your sheath and you get some numbers. And Glenn Stevens had this idea why if you put a bigger sheath there, maybe you can get more numbers. Okay, so instead of doing this for small shifts many times and try to put the things together, right? Like, except 
instead of doing this for degree two, degree three polynomials, degree five polynomials, each time we get some numbers. And at the end, we are like, oh, how are we going to put all these numbers together? His idea was start with some very big sheaf where some that's so big that knows everything. And then try to see, uh, try to construct something big out of it directly. What means something big out of it? I mean, the distributions on ZP star, uh, that's something big. I mean, you can integrate any local energy function and it will give you some number, okay? Okay, so, 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 um, so the idea uh, of Glenn Stevens, so, so this was his idea for, for any kind of one, and uh, it's been generalized by Hansen in higher dimension, and there is a little bit of novelty in, in what I'm saying here, I'll, I'll tell you why. So this V lambda, so, so how this works? So this V lambda of L, well, so these are, this is just the, the C vector space or L vector space on which G is acting algebraically with highest weight lambda, okay? But there is a way uh, to, to see this. Uh, so this is like a theorem in, in, in the presentation theory. This thing can be seen as uh, F, like functions on GQP to L. So for any L, L is any field. So you can think complex numbers or sciatic numbers. Uh, this thing is isomorphic as, as GQP representation. Okay, so as a, as a GQP representation. To, to functions uh, from GQP to L, which are algebraic, so what means algebraic function is just a polynomial in, in the coordinates of the group and the determinant inverse, right? So it's algebraic as a function on GLN, right? So it's a polynomial in, yeah, this is inverse of determinant. And such that F of uh, N minus EG is um, lambda P, so we saw a lot of induction this week. So I'm, I'm going fast on this. I mean, this is just like a parabolic induction from the Borel. So T, T is in the torus and minus, okay, I'm using lower Borel. This is a lower unipotent and G is in the group and it's like this. But because it's algebraic, actually if here, instead of, I, instead of considering G of QP, if I consider, uh, Divacori or for what that matters for me it will be maybe the, the, the this JP. Uh, this will still be okay. And consider something smaller. Of course, if I put here IP, then I adapt this definition. So this time, uh, like the, the N and T should be in the torus of Divacori or the lower triangular matrix in Divacori. Because obviously, like a polynomial, it's anyway determined by finitely many values. So, uh, as long as I'm in something like open, let's say, certainly it works, right? And so, what uh, what, what people uh, consider uh, such a big room. Um, so, so what you can consider, you can consider a, a bigger module, which is uh, is a lambda <coughs> L, which is just same definition, but it's a much bigger space. So you consider this time uh, functions on the evacuary to L, which this time, which are locally analytic. So that's why I need uh, something like this because we, we, we I described what's a local analytic function on CP and the Vacori is like a, uh, it, it, it's a, it's a, by this Vacori decomposition that, who explained today was it John or that year? John, uh, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's isometric to, uh, to product of, of the ZPs, uh, local analytic and, and may problem, same property.
And so that, that's, that's a subspace. And on the level of distributions, uh, you can go from D lambda to, to this uh, V lambda fields. Now, uh, why I'm leaving some place in the middle? Uh, so I'll be very brief, but actually, uh, you, you saw I wrote there some kind of a block matrices. So the core is not well adapted to this business. Uh, that's something you have to trust me uh, uh, because I'm saying it. So, so what, what needs to be done is, uh, let's say this is like a polynomial function in many variables. This is a log local entity function in many variables. What you need here to make exactly this theorem work, you need a version where you have polynomial in certain variables and local analytic in the, in the rest of the variables. Uh, so, so, so basically uh, we have this parabolic Q, uh, it's like this. So, so this is the, the lower part of it. So we want to be, uh, sorry, uh, like this. Oops. So, 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 <clears throat> Okay, so, so this is an exercise here. This is the same, uh, as John said. So this is local analytic function on N of ZP. So these are uh, functions which are uh, locally analytic uh, in those like for GL4. In, 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 uh, in those uh, six variables. Um, what we need is um, functions which are polynomial here and, and, and locally analytic in what's remaining. So, so, so there is an intermediate version, which is uh, A lambda Q, with which, um, well, I can write the definition. It's just functions from J in this time to L, which are uh, locally analytic. And, and some property. Uh, analogous property and, and so uh, so so those functions will, will be a local analytic function on uh, nq of cp but um, well in, in algebraic coefficients so here it's with, with coefficients in l here the coefficients will be in some uh, well what's called d lambda h H is the MQ. This is five dimensional vector strings. So basically, it's polynomial valued function in less analytic variables. Okay, my, my analytic variables are just uh, uh, okay. So, so these things are functions which are locally analytic here. Here. And which are polynomial here, polynomial here. And, um, and, 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 and if you take the dual, you, you find this D lambda, which is actually the D lambda that I want, which is the D lambda Q. And, by duality, it has a quotient which is V lambda. Okay, so I just defined, I mean, on the board above, I just defined a very big module. That's all I did. Okay, and this big module uh, has a uh, uh, action of, uh, of, of this uh, JP and has action of this matrix, the PPP111. So these two things in John's talk generate this delta, this semi group. So if like, uh, uh, a gamma zero p action and an extra matrix. So you can uh, consider exactly the same the the, the cohomology. So so uh, if you consider a, a, um, so p lambda. V lambda, call this uh, R lambda. So here the map is you take uh, a distribution and you just restrict the distribution 
to to the to the algebraic function that it's just a restriction now, right? So this thing induces um, a map from. Um, you can shiftify all this. I'm using the same letters for the. Maybe I should underline them when there is a shift, but I'm not taking such precautions. Uh, so uh, you have a map in in in, uh, in Betty cohomology from the cohomology of this big shift, and I call this map R lambda, to the cohomology of this algebraic thing. Okay, so um, which is taken to very uh, KK and KK means this. Uh, there is this T unramified and this UP operator. Okay, so so here is the definition of this non critical. Um, um, <clears throat> by tilde is non-Q critical uh, if R lambda is an isomorphism when um, localized at um, n pi tilde, what's n pi tilde? n pi tilde is the kernel, the maximal ideal of the Hecke algebra uh, attached to pi tilde. So, uh, well, I send here like the TLs. I, I send them, okay, they should be the TLIs. The TLIs, I send them to the Sataki parameters. Uh, Sataki parameters of pi L, which we saw in the first talk, and this specific UP, I send it to this alpha P. I just send all the Hecke operators to their eigenvalues on P. Um, okay, so that's a technical condition. I, uh, I mean, I'm claiming that it's true if uh, the UP eigenvalue is a small valuation. This comes from what John explained that this abstract map here, there is some kernel, which is another D something on which the UP has big eigenvalues. So somehow the kernel is killed by such a condition, but otherwise it's just a definition. So, so the definition is if you localize here and if you localize here, it's an isomorphism. So why is this important? Well, it's because um, Raghuram explained that if you take pies, uh, you have pi being cohomological exactly means that you have some eigenplus here, this n pi tilde. It, um, right, so this is the unique element here uh, on which the Hecke uh, operators act the way they should, okay? And if this is an isomorphism, well, I can just transfer it there and uh, I have capital pi pi tilde. So if if if, if, if it's non-critical, and and that was Sivan's idea, and what we have won in the process is that now we have a cohomology class with much bigger coefficients, so we can get much more values in a way. So here, basically, when you're in this space, morally out of this class, you can just squeeze out K numbers. So if K is two, you can just squeeze out one number. Uh, or, okay, if you integrate on different cycles, maybe you can squeeze four numbers, but it's not clear how they're related. When you have this cohomology class uh, in the distribution thing, uh, you can, the numbers you squeeze they're much tighter because already they, they kind of live in, they know each other kind of, okay? And um, if you want some kind of a heuristic motivation, so that's kind of um, addressing myself to uh, students having maybe more like an automorphic background, uh, some kind of uh, heuristic uh, 
a heuristic uh, explanation um, why this is useful, why going uh, to uh, like this big D lambda is useful. Well, it's because um, <clears throat> um, well, um, well, it's useful. This is because um, we can deduce uh, statements of the flavor. If M is very close to M prime pianically, so it's congruent to our starter John like writing some big powers in series. Uh, this implies that the, the L value uh, at M and, and the one at M prime, like normalized, they're also very congruent. So, um, okay. Um, um, I guess, um, okay, so that's for the criticality assumption. Um, now I'm kind of have to explain maybe the last part, which is, I mean, I'm still only with cohomology. I just kind of upgraded my co cycle to something with big coefficients, okay? Um, So the last part is this Poincaré duality, or I call this uh, automorphic uh, symbols. It is just generalizations of this uh, paths from zero to infinity on the model curve. Okay. So, um, well, what is going on? Uh, I, I forget numbers. So, uh, So I, I have to choose a degree because the only way to get a number out of a cohomology class is to integrate it or something. So, so choose uh, the degree to be T, so this top degree. And I try to explain why, why the truth is for two different reasons, that's a very good choice. So I start by this um, uh, cohomology class here and um, well, so, 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 uh, proposition. Uh, there exists uh, evaluation map uh, which starts from there and constructs a distribution of Z to star with coefficients in L. So, um, <clears throat> How, how is this working? So, um, well, idea, what was the idea? Idea for, for this construction of L lambda. Well, so the idea is that, um, so, um, wait, okay. first of all, I mean, even, okay, uh, for, for the moment, there's no L, there's no L values. I can just consider this H, which is uh, uh, GLN. Um, I can consider the map like in, in, in the main transform. I can embed GL and in GL to N. Okay, that's I'm allowed to do. And I embed it by taking H to the block matrix H001. Okay, so that's the thing. Well, so. Um, Doing this, um, I can pull, I mean, this induces a map. This induces a map from the locally symmetric space for H of uh, some level KH beta to the beta to S. 
right? I mean, you, you just, this is a double quotient, like academic points, module rational points, module sum open compact. Uh, if you do the same thing here, uh, academic points, module rational points, module sum open compact, this will just carry over, okay? There's a little set of infinity, but this carries over. So, but what's important here? What's important is that this guy here is always the same. I use one GLN sloping symmetric space the same way I use one uh, Riemann surface. Whereas this thing here, I, I, uh, I change the level. So this is like considering different paths on the same Riemann surface, okay? Uh, and, and, and this is in, in, in accordance. I mean, if you want to construct something that knows infinitely many L values, you better put in the construction infinitely many cycles on the same space. Because if you do some kind of a finite construction, you'll just get a finite result. And this induces that. And, and what's important is that this guy here has dimension T. It just happens like this. It's an exercise. Yeah. All oh, right. H's, sorry. H's, H my H2. I was, uh, I get ahead of myself with the prepare jacket and got lost. Yeah, I need, yeah. So that's the difference with GIL2. In GIL2, you don't really see that because, uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, here you really need the two copies, sorry. Yeah. So, so, and, and you understand now that if you have a T differential form, if you pull it back to a dimension T real manifold, you'll get a number. You just will integrate it on this thing, okay? So, well, uh, basically, okay, so there's a lot of work here. There's like uh, at least 10 pages of doing this precisely, but um, this works. It's, uh, I mean, so this evaluation uh, will, will give you numbers. Um, okay, so now I, I want to explain two things. So one thing is that I can do this in family and the proof is just one line in a way. I mean, I did, didn't give you the proof here, but the proof is completely formal. I mean, this evaluation of the sheet, et cetera. So if you put another sheet, this will, this will, this kind of construction of this evaluation, uh, I mean, you can call it evaluation, uh, index the module, it's functorial in whatever you put here, just the, the beauty of shift cohomology, often it's functorial in the coefficients. So, so, uh, so, 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 so there exists uh, F U, so U is like in, um, uh, in John Stokes. So for any U uh, in the weight space, which contains lambda, uh, there exists an A view which looks which works just the same the same way, and and this this way you'll consider a distribution with all your values. Uh, that's what John denotes uh, gamma u o. Now, uh, so far, in a way, we are just like playing with chaotic things. Like we have some locally symmetric space, some big shift, and we evaluate like this, like that. And we construct some distributions, but maybe the distributions are just zero all the time. This can happen. I mean, like uh, uh, you can very well uh, they, they they can be zero for two very different reasons. First, they can be zero because probably this uh, this uh, this cycles that we consider maybe they're homologically trivial. If they're homologically trivial, you integrate whatever you want on them, it will be zero. Even if they're homologically non-trivial, still the 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 um, if you take, for example, a class which comes from an automorphic form, which is not Shalika, we don't have this extra symmetry being symplectic. When you do this business, actually you'll find zero for a much more subtle reason. Uh, somehow for those who know, for example, Hubert model surfaces, uh, if you integrate like a, a non-base change form over a modular curve in the Hilbert surface, this will be zero for a non-trivial reason. Okay. And so, so the, 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 the significance of all this is in the lower square. So is, is that if you go down to this S B lambda dual, so if you go to the actual algebraic things, 
and you do this evaluation here. So here you just find a bunch of numbers. So, okay, in this case, uh, let me just take one evaluation map, which is to a chi and M. Remember like M is the power of the simple topic and this is just a chi, so it's just a specific evaluation. So you take a L, you find a L here, and here the map is to a distribution. You, you integrate the distribution, you evaluate it at chi, chi seek to the M. So you, you obtain a number. Well, so um, um, the, the, the trust of all this construction, and that's where uh, the Rob the Ragnarok's paper come in and this river Jacquet integral is that uh, here, like this, all this is commutative by abstract nonsense, but this value here is related uh, to, to the L value. So this is basically related to some number to the L value of pi tensor chi and n plus one half uh, over the period. And, and why, I mean, uh, maybe I should go here because that's why I wrote, why is that? Because uh, Friedberg and Jacquet, uh, well, they, they, they found that integral representation for, for the, for the, for the uh, so they, they prove what's called the integral representation, which is the generalization of Berlin's transform. So they, they, they prove that um, the L function of pi at S is equal. So if pi is shall like, so here it's for the first time, uh, I insist on this S. So, so and, and, oh, and what's shall like? Huh? So shall like means it, it, it's like Whitaker, but a little bit differently. It means that pi can be embedded. So remember, like Whitaker meant that we can embed pi in induction from n to g, where we put this additive character. Here, what I'm putting is this Shalaika group, g of psi. And what's the Shalaika group? So the Shalaika group is the group which is like h h like this, and then uh, block unipotent like this, x. And the character is like psi of trace of x. It's, it's completely equivalent to, to a completely analog, sorry, to, 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 to the generic uh, thing that we saw in, in, in uh, Nadir's lectures. It's a different kind of model. Not every cuspidal automorphic representation for GLN has this property. It's equivalent to being symplectic. So morally half of them have it, maybe the smaller half. Uh, but when you have this property, uh, Friedberg and JK show that the L function uh, can be um, um, represented. So, so okay. So, so you call this uh, the, the the image here. You 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 uh, like a, a P here goes to a W here. Uh, so that that's the the uh, vector in the Shalika model. Um, You have this formula, so uh, at h. So if you think about it, what this means, it means that to 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 obtain the L value, you have to integrate uh, your 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 form on uh, like something in GL two n, which sits like block. And that's exactly what we did with this rest restriction. And um, so so. so um, so it's not totally surprising that this works. Um, let me maybe um, uh, say one last thing, which will be, uh, I mean, it, it's a very long, so, so for, for, I mean, I, I, I'm not saying that any of you should read uh, this kind of articles, so, so there is, but there are articles, uh, you can see my webpage or, uh, um, I'm trying somehow to to um, uh, to explain what are the ideas behind and what could possibly be useful to you someday. I mean, uh, the, the, the concrete um, um, things are maybe uh, less less important. So, so I, I want to to explain just one idea quickly and, and maybe finish with a closing remark. Um, the, the, the 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 one idea I want to to mention is that um, 
in, in this um, Pianic uh, family modular business, what's extremely useful is to have a linear functional on, on a vector space. It sounds stupid, but um, uh, said like this, but um, um, uh, Um, you know, like if you consider a modular form F like a primitive form in in uh, S one and prim, and you attach the L function of F uh, case one. Well, so so this is a, a finite set of primitive forms, and these are just values. But 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 what Melin transform is providing is is a linear so so this thing that, uh, was here it, it was something which was like linear on the whole space of all forms so like a some financial vector space which on primitive eigenforms gives the l value uh, another another example of a powerful uh, idea like this is you can consider the map which on primitive, which sends just the primitive form to one. And actually you can linearize this map in a very interesting way, which is you can, you can take uh, the map from all uh, cusp forms uh, to C and to a cusp form F, you attach the first Fourier coefficient. This sounds extremely down to earth, but it's extremely useful if you want to study like congruences or things like this. To 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 to, this, to linearize somehow the, the 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 L values or other maps, okay? And so here, what we have done is we have um, this map here, and more sophisticated this map here. We have linearized this uh, L function map. So we have constructed some linear map so that wherever you have some very specific class, you get L values. So uh, why? Uh, sorry, I'm mostly not writing things now. Why is this a very powerful thing? Um, okay, so maybe let me write just this in here. So, uh, why uh, having this map from uh, H E? Uh, it, it only works there for dots. It only for T. It only works for T. So um, from S U. Um, to, uh, why this way having this uh, it is a powerful tool? Um, well, because um, when you have cohomology with integral coefficients and even more like with some huge coefficients like this. I can put bigger and bigger coefficients, but this doesn't mean I'll create more and more cohomology. I mean, somehow the cohomology is linked to the geometry of the of this thing. So uh, if it doesn't have an H1, I can put as much coefficients as I want. This won't create H1 out of nothing, okay? And often what's happening is that uh, you construct classes, but they're probably torsion or even zero, okay? On the right hand side, though, I have a distributions on something which is with all your coefficients. All you, this is like the function on some uh, poly disk. So it's something like, uh, I'll give you a wrong idea, but it's something like a power series in many variables kind of thing. Uh, if, if people know what's state algebra, it's pretty much something like this. I mean, it, anyway, what I want to say is that this is a all your torsion free model. That's that's a fact, and this map is all linear. That's also a fact. So this means that there is a dichotomy: either you, you vanish completely in this map, or you map to something which is all torsion free. So this means that if you have some class here which is torsion, it will go to zero. So this means, and, and we control this map by uh, by we co control a little bit of this map by L values. So this means that. If you take a class and it goes to something and you know that it's not zero because, for example, you evaluate it here and down here and 
you go to some L value and that's non zero, and this happens in many ways. For example, if you take a non central, if M is not uh, zero, actually those things are non zero by automorphic techniques. I mean, maybe you've seen that like modular forms, they don't vanish outside the central point. Go to other. Well, now this allows you to, this means that you have constructed a whole eigenclass there. Which is we don't have oil torsion. So in, 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 in Jones language, we've constructed a component of eigenvariety which has some dimension. And, and that's um, yeah, that's why like such things can be very useful beyond constructing PI hill functions. Okay, thank you very much. It's late now. But I'll have to take question on this. It's, I have one. It's part of the problem. You mentioned it last time, but some ideas go back to actual history. So, Friedberg and Jacke studied the analytic theory. Ash and Ginsburg tried to construct periodic functions using Friedberg Jacke. But many of their details were working only for GL4. And ordinary. And, and formality in degree 5. And in conference, Rogner and I, what the uh, was to observe that 5 is the top degree, the possible degrees which Hasbro formality survives. And that top degree, coincidentally, is the dimension of the manifold for GLN cross GLN. That, so that, and then that was we were able to take off from that. And then yeah. Okay, since uh, I'll do like some other people do on other conferences, they, they bounce on questions to tell, tell more stuff. Uh, no, I, I just want things. Uh, no, because of this T, I mean, like it wasn't clear today why I took T and not the bottom degree. I mean, uh, one reason is this numerical uh, uh, coincidence, but there's another reason which is. I mean, uh, most people know long exact sequences. So if you have, uh, if you if you have like this uh, uh, this du which goes to this d lambda, I mean th there is a long exact sequence which is like h t of du uh, will we, we, we'll go to h t. Uh, I mean, tensor uh, l over o u. Will subject to uh, h t of d lambda, right? I mean, if you if you denote here the kernel which is k, I mean here the co-kernel which will, which was some h t plus one of this thing, and this vanishes because it's top degree. So so what's happening is because we are in top degree, we know that uh, such kind of things are true. Actually, that's necessary an isomorphism. So. From commutative algebra point of view, this means that uh, whatever we're constructing is monogenic, is by Nakayama's lemma, because uh, you remember by this uh, non critical thing that's supposed to be the same thing with V lambda, which we know it's one dimensional. So if this is one dimensional, this means that this big thing as OU module is monogenic, right? So this is aligned by, by non criticality. So by Nakayama, if you have, I mean, a module over all you can be horrible, but when you tensor with the so, so this means that this thing here may be localized, it's monogenic. Monogenic means it's like OU module some ideal. So, and if so, so this is because of the top degree, this thing is OU module some ideal because of the non torsion thing. It doesn't have to have torsion unless it's zero. So, so because of this non-torsionness, this is so this is either equal by, by this non-torsion thing. So this is the no, it's either OU the whole thing or it's zero. So for little that you know that it's not zero, you know that your your module is OU. So this means that in John's picture, your eigenvariety is OU, so V equals U. So this is what this means. This being OU means that V, V is U. So this means that it's best possible scenario, like you, you vary the weight, the 
you vary the form. So it's really uh, the geometry is very simple. But that's that's only because of the top degree. If you try to do this at some kind of a middle degree, will be horrible, and the bottom degree won't help much either. So, I mean, one thing. Yeah. So that's that was supposed to be like this closing comment I want to make is that uh, these things kind of look that they might work. The reason they actually work is because. Uh, Raghuram and Grobner set up the automorphic theory, and also uh, Nadir Gleb talk about how the local representation theory can be can be uh, can be made very precise. And these kind of things that we didn't show in the whole workshop, I mean, I, I want to kind of convey the idea that uh, you really need to prove such kind of results to to combine things from representation theory, from eigenvarieties, and from automorphic theory. If you just try by bare hands to do these things, like write them cycles and integrate, unless you're extremely powerful on, on doing computations, you won't succeed. Like and even if you succeed, nobody will read it because it will be so technical that uh, it will be impossible to read. So 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 it's really important. Uh, I mean, there, I've been grad student, so I, I can imagine how all this workshop looks. But but believe me that, that there is like some 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 common picture in, in all these talks. There's a big picture.